Welcome back. Today I will read chapter 15. I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 15. The Crickets. The crickets sang in the grasses. They sang the song of summer, summer's ending and sad monotonous. monotonous song. Summer is over and gone. They sang. Over and gone, over and gone. Summer is dying, dying. The crickets felt it was their duty to warn everybody that some time cannot last forever. Even on the most beautiful days in the whole year. The days when summer is changing into fall. The crickets spread the rumor of sadness and change. Everybody heard the song of the crickets. Every infirm Abel heard it as they walked the dusty road. They knew, they knew that school would soon begin again. The young geese heard it and knew that there would never be little goslings again. Charlotte heard it and knew that she hadn't much time left. Miss Zickerman at work in the kitchen heard the crickets and sadness came over her too. Another summer gone. She sighed. Lovey at work with a crate for Wilbur, heard the song, and knew it was time to dig potatoes. Summer is over and gone, repeated the crickets. How many nights until frost, sang the crickets. Goodbye, summer. Goodbye, goodbye. The sheep heard the cricket, and they felt so uneasy. They broke a hole in the pasture fence and wandered up the field across the road. The gander discovered the hole and led his family through. As they walked to the orchard and ate the apples that were lying on the ground, a little maple tree in the swamp heard the cricket song and turned bright red with anxiety. Weber was now the center of attraction on the farm. Good food and regular hours were showing results. Wherever was a pig, any man would be proud of. One day, more than 100 people came to stand in his yard and admired, admire him. Charlie had written the word radiant, and Wherever really looked radiant as he, as he stood in the golden sunlight. Ever since his brother had befriended him, he had done his best to live up to his reputation. When Charlotte's web said some pig, Wilbur had tried to look like some pig. When Charlotte's web said terrific, Wilbur had tried to look terrific. And now that the web said radiant, he did everything possible to make himself glow. It is not easy to look radiant, but Wilbur threw himself in, into it with a will. He would turn his head slightly and blink his long eyelash, eyelashes. Then he would breathe deeply, and when his eyes grew bored, he would spring into the air and do a backflip with a half twist. At this, the crowd yelled and cheered. How's that for a pig? Mrs. Zickman would ask. Well, pleased with himself. That pig is radiant. Some of Robert's friends in the barn worried for fear. All his attention would go to his head and make him stuck up. But it never did. Robert was modest. Fame did not spoil him. He still worry some about the future. As he could hardly believe, that a mere spider will be able to save his life. Sometimes at night, he will have a bad dream. He will dream that men were coming to get him with knives and guns. But that was only a dream. In the daytime, Wilbur usually felt happy and confident. No pig ever had truer friends. And he realized that friendship is one of the most satisfying things in the world. Even the song of the crickets did not 
make Rivor too sad. He knew it was almost time for the county, county fair, and he was looking forward to the trip. Avery could distinguish himself at the fair and maybe win some prize money. He was sure Sigmund would let him live. Charlotte had words of her own, and she kept crying about them. One morning, Robert asked her about the fair. You're going, you're going with me, aren't you, Charlotte? He, he said. Well, I don't know, replied Charlotte. The fair comes at a bad time for me. I shall find it inconvenient to leave home, even for a few days. Why? asked Robert. Oh, I just don't feel like living my web. Too much going on around here. Please come with me, Bear Rubber. I need you, Charlotte. I can't stand going to the fair without you. You have just got to come. No, says Charlotte. I believe I both stay home and see if and see if I can't get some work done. What kind of work? asks Rubber. Egg laying. It's time to make an egg sack and fill it with eggs. I don't know if you could lay eggs. I didn't know if you could lay eggs, said River in amazement. Oh, sure, said the spider. I'm fair to light. What, what does fair to light mean for of eggs? asked River. Surely not, said Charlotte. And first to tire means I can turn with ease with one thing to another. It means I don't have a limit my activities to sp spinning and trapping and stunts like that. Why don't you come with me to the camp fairgrounds and lay your eggs there? Played River. It would be wonderful fun. Shall I give her web a twitch and really watch the Sway. I'm afraid not, she said. You don't know the first thing about egg laying, Wilbur. I can't erase my family duties to suit the management of the county fair. When I get ready to lay eggs, I have to lay eggs, fair or no fair. However, I don't want you to worry about it. You might lose weight. You're, we'll leave it this way. I'll come to the fair if I possibly can. Oh, good, said River. I know you won't forsake me just when I need you most. All that day, River stayed inside, taking life easy in the swamp. Charlotte rested and ate a grasshopper. She knew that she couldn't help River much longer. In a few days, she would have Drop everything and build a bird for the sack that will hold her eggs. See you next week for chapter 16.